Hello, welcome to Shad Life. I have the Cisco T8 right here, and we talked about it <laughs> here uh, quite a bit of how bad the brakes are. And what I love about YouTube is uh, many of you viewers have mentioned a few different ways to try to resolve, mainly the big amount of space here before the pads engage the disc, right? So I decided that this is a good moment <laughs> to try these things and see what works. So um, the first one I wanna try is taking the wheel out and squeezing the brake lever without the disc in between the pads. Now, if you know anything about hydraulic disc brakes, this isn't an issue with mechanical disc brakes, but hydraulic disc brakes, one of the biggest things you don't want to do is you don't want to squeeze the lever when there's no rotor in because the pads are designed to self-adjust. So just like car brakes and all disc brakes, hydraulic ones, as the pads wear, they self-adjust to always be within a certain gap to the rotor. Um, so I'm going to actually do what you're not supposed to do to see if I can get the pads closer to the rotor. So we're just going to play with the front brake here because it's easier to take the front wheel off. Um, so I'll, uh, aim the camera a little better for that, get a little closer and let's go ahead and, uh, try this trick. So the idea here is we take out the front wheel. Right, and we'll just put that aside for now. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the lever and make these pads go in closer. So I'm gonna do this and then release. They don't. Weird. All right, I did that like <laughs> four times. I'm a little, I didn't see them get any closer, but hey, let's put a wheel in there and see what they actually did. Now I'm not gonna tighten that down. It feels better, I can't really tell, but let me uh, do a couple more and see. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if this works, this video will be short because I'm just gonna do this and leave it. And it appears to be working, so. Um, that worked. That actually worked, and I was actually able to squeeze the lever quite a few times, so it must self-adjust very incrementally and not just close the pads right away, which is interesting, but, uh, I mean, there's still a decent amount of play, but it's definitely a lot better. So that was, yeah, when I compare it, because I had these set up exactly the same, this grabs a lot sooner than the rear does. Um, now you can hear the rotor rubbing. So I'll have to readjust that, of course. Um, looks like it's 
very subtle. It's almost as if the rotor is uh, warped a little, but I can fix that. Um, that made a big difference. Well, a video that I thought was going to be pretty long is actually going to be really short. That actually worked. So there were at least three people that suggested this. Um, and I'm quite surprised. Doing the thing you're not supposed to do <laughs> was the thing that made this actually work properly. Um, I do want to add one more thing, and this is um, probably because there are different rotor thicknesses. Um, there's 2.5 millimeter, I believe, and I believe Shimano's are two millimeter. That's a pretty large difference. Um, I think it's like a certain SRAM rotor or whatever. So I do feel like if those rotors were used on this bike, maybe this wouldn't be a problem. Maybe these brakes are designed for that thicker rotor. I don't know. Um, Tektro has been making brakes for a very long time. And when it comes to mechanical brakes, they've had some really good ones. I know coming from the BMX days, they made some really good U brakes. They've made really good V brakes, things like that. So, I mean, they're a reputable company. So I'm kind of surprised that these have the issues that they have, but apparently um, there are ways to resolve it. So I'm going to keep playing with this and get these to a, a ideal uh, way that I like them. And I do believe because of this, I can move the levers closer to the grip again um, so I don't have to reach so far. I was noticing, um, it was just yesterday that I was doing the video uh, in Cayuna, the first ride of this bike, and a lot of times there's technical sections of trail where I like to kind of have my fingers on the ready, and on this bike I noticed I didn't like that because I had to reach so far, so I was riding on the grip and only reaching for the levers when I needed to, and then there's certain parts of trails, of course I was on relatively easy trails, but I can see where when I get on really technical trails, I don't want to be in that like not fully grip position so I can reach the levers. And so it's important, especially if you're riding technical trails, that your levers are set up so you can easily reach and grab them and maybe even ride your finger on them and still have a good solid grip. Um, if any women are watching this or men with smaller hands or kids, kids too, Getting that lever closer to the grip is absolutely mandatory for mountain biking. I have actually, and it's women that I've seen this happen to, seen them have to like literally shift their hands like this to reach their levers, and they're usually using two fingers and things like that while they're riding. That's not safe. <laughs> so um, make sure that your levers are adjusted so you can easily grab them. Almost all brake levers that I know of, you can get closer to the grip and, and have them easier to reach um, or get smaller levers or something like that. And it's definitely something when you're buying a bike from a bike shop, make sure you mention it. Say, hey, I have smaller hands. I need to be able to reach a lever. Can you help me adjust them? And then they can tweak the caliper to match that new adjustment because sometimes if you adjust the lever it'll make it rub or do something like that so there you have it <laughs> uh i i love this thanks for your feedback and suggestions um and this first thing i tried actually worked <laughs> so i'll get this dialed in and uh get out and do some more rides with it I appreciate your support for my channel. Please like and subscribe. Peace.